This video will cover the Geometry Common Core exam from June 2015, question 35. Question 35 is about a water tower that's pictured below. So I'm just going to scroll up so we can see it. We have this water tower that's mo modeled by a two-dimensional figure beside it. The water tower is composed of a hemisphere. Now a hemisphere is a half circle. Well, a half sphere. And then the 2D figure is then a half circle. So it's composed of a hemisphere, a cylinder, and a cone. It says, let C be the center of the hemisphere and let D be the center of the base of the cone. So if I scroll up, you can see the full picture here. And it says that question 35 is continued on the next page. So I'm just going to keep scrolling up and we're going to see our next picture or our next question. So it says if AC is 8.5 feet, so I'm going to check to make sure that that's labeled, AC 8.5 feet. So that looks like maybe it's the radius of this hemisphere or of this half circle. BF is 25 feet. So BF is 25, already labeled, good. And measure of angle EFD is 47. E to F to D is 47 degrees. Determine and state to the nearest cubic foot the volume of the water tower. Now we have a reference sheet at the back of our um, test. You have one on yours um, that we can use that tells us about the volumes of different shapes. So remember that it says that this figure was made up of a cone. So we need the volume of a cone plus the volume of a cylinder plus the volume of this hemisphere, the half sphere. So I have to calculate three volumes here and then sum them together to get the total volume. So looking at the volume formulas on our next, or on the reference sheet, we can find that the volume of a cone is equal to one-third pi r squared times the height. The volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r squared times the height and the volume of, well, they only tell us the volume of a sphere. So I'm going to take the volume of a sphere and divide it by 2 because we have a hemisphere, a half sphere. is 4 thirds pi r cubed, but again we're dividing by 2. So I'm going to calculate the volume for all three of these shapes. Volume of a cone, volume of a cylinder, and volume of a sphere. I'm going to take a second just to resketch the picture so that we can see it on this paper so I don't have to keep going back and forth. And then we're going to consider plugging into the formula. So in just a second, you'll see the, the new picture pop up on your screen. Okay, so first we're going to look at calculating the volume of the cone. So I'm going to use this triangular figure up here at the top to find that volume of the cone. Because the radius of my semicircle at the bottom is 8.5, that means any other radius would also be 8.5. So that means the radius of my cone is also 8.5. So I can start plugging in. I have 1 third pi 8.5. Now the height is something that I don't know. The height is something I'm not sure about. So I have to put h there for now. Which means that we actually have to do a side calculation. We have to find the height of the cone. So again, any radius on here is 8.5. So now I've got this triangle with F 47 degrees, D, FD is 8.5, and point E. And my goal is to find this height, say H. Here it looks like we have two sides and one angle, 47 degrees. If we have two sides and one angle, that's telling me that we should be using trig. 
so ka to -a. Where S is sine, C is cosine, T is tangent, O is opposite, so the side opposite of the angle, and it looks as though if I circle my angle, the height that I'm trying to find is my opposite. Um, H means hypotenuse. I do not need to worry about this hypotenuse FE, so I'm not going to use anything with hypotenuse. And A means adjacent, or in other words, next to the angle. So I have O and A forcing me to use TOA. So I'm going to set up the tangent equation. I have tangent of the angle, 47 degrees, is equal to opposite the height over adjacent the 8.5. And because I'm solving for h on the right-hand side, and it's in a fraction, I'm going to set the left-hand side up as a fraction as well. Just makes life a little bit easier because solving proportions is nice and easy. All we have to do is cross-multiply. So now I have h equals 8.5 times tangent of 47 degrees. Your calculator must be in degree mode in order to do this calculation. If you have a TI 83 or 84, click on mode on your calculator, mode, then go down to where you see degree, hit enter, and then just quit the menu. If you have an Inspire, TI Inspire that you are using, it's already in degree mode, so you don't have to worry about changing it. So all you need to do now at this point is to type it in, 8.5 times tangent of 47 degrees. Make sure that the 47 is inside of parentheses, otherwise you're going to get a wrong answer. So now I know that my height is equal to 9.11513. So I'm going to transfer that up here, right there. Okay, but I'm going to erase that arrow because I don't want it across my paper. So now I'm going to plug in, I have one third pi times 8.5 times 9.11513. And yes, I'm writing that whole decimal. Of course, the decimal keeps going, but if you carry those five places with it, you're going to be okay. Be very careful when you type this equation into your calculator. Make sure that the one third is inside of parentheses. Anytime you put parentheses on your paper, you should also put it in your calculator. So I have one third times pi times 8.5 times 9.11513. And I end up with an answer of 689.651. So now that's not my final answer, but I'm going to circle it because that's what, something I'm going to come back to later. Next, we need to find the volume of a cylinder. So in order to find the volume of the cylinder, I'm going to focus on the rectangle that I see here because the rectangle is representing the cylinder. If I think about the radius again, the radius is always 8.5 in this problem, and my height of the cylinder is the 25, that's representing BH. So volume of my cylinder is pi times 8.5 squared times 25, the height. Again, just plugging in the given information. Use parentheses on your calculator, make sure that you um, Put 8.5 in parentheses before you square it. Make sure you use the pi button, not 3.14. Yes, 3.14 is an approximation, but it will give you a wrong answer in the, in the end because it's rounding too early. So when we type it in, we get 5,674.5. So again, I'm going to circle this. Not my final answer, but it's part of my final answer. Okay, and the last part of this problem that I need to calculate is the volume of my half sphere. So all I need to plug in here is a radius, and again, radius is 8.5. So I have 4 thirds pi times 8.5 raised to the power of 3, all divided by 2. So I'm going to deal with this top part first, get a value, and then I'm going to deal with the bottom part, divided by 2. So here I have 818.833 pi. 
I chose not to type in the pi right away because I just wanted to get rid of the fraction of 4 thirds and the 8.5 to the power of 3, all divided by 2. Now this is something I can type into the calculator, making sure I type in the top part in parentheses. And so I end up with 1,286.22. Again, circling it because it's part of my final answer, but I still have one more final calculation to do before I'm done. The last calculation that we need to do is to sum all of the volumes that we found. We did all of this work so that we could find the total volume. So step four is the total volume. So I'm going to take 689.651 plus 5,674.5 plus 1,286.22. Again, that's taking each of the volumes that we found after each individual calculation and summing them all together to get a total of 7,650.37. Now because it does say to round to the nearest foot, nearest foot means no decimals, so my nearest foot would be 7,650. Final answer, 7,650. Whew, that was a lot of work, but remember this is a six point question, so it makes sense that we're doing a lot of work for this problem. This first part, I believe, was scored out of four points. The other two points come in at the bottom here. Oh boy, this is going to be goofy for me. Uh, okay, sorry about that. So here it says the water tower was constructed to hold a maximum of 400,000 pounds of water. If water weighs 62.4 pounds per cubic foot, can the water tower be filled to 85% of its volume and not exceed the weight limit? Now we said that our final answer up top, the volume of it up top, is 7,650, but this was feet cubed, or cubic feet. So first, we want to figure out how much can we fill this if we're talking about 85% of the volume. And we're going to figure it out in terms of pounds. They tell us that we have 400,000 pounds of water that this entire tower can hold, 100% is 400,000 pounds, but we only want to fill it to 85% of that. So first we're going to find 85% of 400,000. Oops, too many zeros. 400,000. So in order to do that, we're going to take 85% and change it to a decimal. All we have to do is divide by 100. 85 divided by 100 becomes 0.85. Remember, percents are always out of 100. That's why we did division of 100. 0.85 times 400,000. That gives us an answer of 340,000 pounds. So what we want to do is figure out if we fill this uh, water tower to 85% of the volume, when I change the volume to cubic, from cubic feet to pounds, am I going to exceed the weight limit? So our second step is to convert the volume from cubic feet to pounds. And the way that we can do this very easily is to set up a proportion, say pounds over cubic feet. We know that we have x pounds for 7,650 cubic feet. But we also know based on the problem that we have 6 point or 62.4 pounds per one cubic foot. So we cross multiply to solve. x equals 7,650 times 62.4 gives us 4,700, I'm sorry, 477,360 pounds, 477,360. 
Now, if we think about whether we can fill this water tower to 85% of the volume and not exceed the weight limit, my volume in pounds is 477,360, which is far greater than this uh, 85% of the, the weight that this water tower can hold. So our final answer here would be no, because the volume is larger than the weight limit for the tower. So again, answers for this problem are the 7,650 for part 1 and no for part 2, but of course you do have to show all of the work.